I said, like I said, you know, you have been around literally my entire life as far as staying consistently working and always mm-hmm. doing different projects. How how have you been able to successfully enjoy longevity your way? Wow, good question. Um, I think it's been a journey for me. Um, certainly, uh, I went to a performing arts high school in Philly. I went to Howard University and and furthered my acting studies. Uh, So those were just like the glory days, just learning and, you know, getting to do what I'd love to do and finding my passion. Um, It was all great. Of course, being at Howard was great. Um, And I booked my first professional job when I was a senior at Howard um, and then moved on to New York. Um, so it was just great. Um, I I kind of got out the gate and just started booking things, was able to book Lean On Me and um, doing theater and living in New York. Um, and so, so, you know, the early days were great. And then, you know, you have those periods where you go down and so you have your, your lean years and, and those were tough, of course. And um, but, you know, I, I have been very fortunate. I have had a really long career and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I am considered a working actress. I I'm mostly made my money from acting. So I'm very, very fortunate and very honored, you know, to be doing what I love. So it's, it is a rarity and I know that. So I'm very fortunate. Can you tell me you're, rev- you're reprising your role in the Proud family? What was that experience like for you? Wow. Well, it was great to hear, you know, we were so excited. Fans have been asking for where's the reboot? Where's the reboot? You know, I felt like we didn't even, you know, get a really long run when it first came on, you know, Uh, people were disappointed that it that it didn't continue. So so this was long time, you know, looking forward to it coming to fruition. So we were all excited, of course. Um, And then it, it it was like almost perfect timing because of COVID and we had to isolate and, you know, they're trying to figure out how to do productions. Um, but because uh, voiceover work lends itself to s- your just being solo in the booth, it was like perfect timing, you know, because um, we just go in, we record our lines and, you know, the next person comes in. So... Um, so it actually worked out perfectly that we started during the during the pandemic. Yeah, you know? I always find voiceovers so interesting because you're literally acting with no one watching, <laughs> or not you know like in a booth by yourself. Like, how do you approach right. that versus being on stage or in front of a camera? You know, that bringing that same intensity to your roles in that same life. How do you approach that differently? Right. Yeah, it's it's, it's very different. And yeah, you have to kind of, I mean, somebody's reading the other people's lines with you sometimes uh, to kind of give you a rhythm. But but you just have to, you, you really use your imagination. And I think, uh, you know, I started acting because that's what I used to do as a little girl. I was talking to walls. I was creating care, imaginary characters and having conversation so you know so I think some of that you know naturally came out of me um, but it's but in one way you don't have to do hair you don't have to do makeup you know you can just slap in your you know your pajamas if you wanted to and show up um, and and so it's in that way it's a little easier um, but you you know you're just using your whole body but you're, you're using your mind for sure and just trying to you know relate and and create it all on yourself so so it's it's fun but it's definitely different for sure i want to switch because you're you're in a film uh with netflix about jeffrey dahmer playing the mother of one of his victims and Mm -hmm. i remember following this story very intensely because it was just Mm kind of gruesome Mm -hmm. how do you approach this character and this story which is very you know just gruesome in nature and bring you know honor and integrity to the victims while still kind of protecting your spirit from taking all of that you know that trauma in that happened how did you approach that role yeah i think um i was already in a heavy spirit because of where we were in this country uh with the murder of george floyd and ahmaud arbery 
um, so my spirit was already there, you know, um, that sadness, that heaviness, that folks, so many folks dying from COVID, just death. It was just constant death day after day. Um, so I was able to use that for sure from coming from that space. And then, you know, as a, as a black woman, I, I have a brother, I have nephews and great nephews and that, that angst, that worry mm -hmm. when they go out in the world has always been with me. Um, unfortunately, uh, but I was able to pull from that. And then, you know, because of technology and where we live, uh, where we are in this world, um, you know, there's YouTube. <laughs> so, you know, I was able to watch a lot of Shirley Hughes's videos mm -hmm. and and get to see her and get to know her. Uh, she was very instrumental in terms of, you know, before the trial, during and after, you know, she was, she was just one of those mothers who were just, she was adamant about finding, you know, um, and getting Jeffrey Dahmer prosecuted. So, um, so I had a lot of footage to work with as well. And she, she was a, um, she was a, a Christian woman. She was a very woman of, of deep faith. And, um, and so she was, she was amazing. She was amazing. Um, so it was an honor to get to play her yeah. for sure. And I don't think you often, you know, you hear these cases and these stories and, the victims and their families often get lost in the telling of this story. Yep. So I think it's wonderful to bring honor to them instead, you know what I mean? Instead of yeah. kind of you know, highlighting, you know, we always forget about the people um, left behind to deal yeah. with all of this stuff. And I, I can't imagine yeah yeah kudos, kudos to ryan murphy for because we've seen several jeffrey dahmer you know stories uh, and biopics um and this is the first one that focused on the victims and 90 percent of his victims over 90 percent were black and brown young men yep 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 what other uh projects are you working on currently what do you have in the pipeline <laughs> um, in the pipeline, I got to work uh, with the great Tyler Perry for the first time uh, last year. I'll be on his season three of his show, Bruh. Okay. Um, coming on is Candace Renee's mother. I'm that mother and mother-in-law from hell who <laughs> comes for a visit and doesn't leave. Uh, so that was big fun. It was it was such a tremendous honor to work with Tyler to be uh, to see his studio up I and close. You were on that studio set. Oh my gosh, girl! <laughs> yeah, it was it was just wonderful how he just pays homage to all of those who came before us. It's it's beautiful. Uh, different productions we're working on at the same time. I mean, it is just big. It's huge. He employs so many young people. Uh, people of color and giving them great opportunities to learn about the business and and hone their skills and um, and he he treated me like royalty. It it was it was just great. It was great. I was so honored. So that's going to be fun. That's season three. Uh, I did my homework. I did a Hallmark Christmas movie for the first time. Uh, which was a bucket list thing of mine. Everybody wants to do a Hallmark Christmas movie. Uh, so I got to do that. Tis the season to be merry. And, and I did a Christmas, I mean, a Hallmark movie in the summertime as well. Uh, Love for Real, which was great. So it was great getting to work with Hallmark too for the first yeah. time. So what do you do to, as, as self-care, how do you take care of yourself when you're not working? Yeah. Um, I think my 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 main um thing for self care is my Buddhist practice. Uh I'm I'm like Tina Turner, I chant Nam Yo Renge Kyo. Uh I've been a Buddhist for eighteen years and that has really been that that component, that key that helps me ride the up and downs, that helps me really connect um, with a character and to be able to to see their humanity try my best to bring out their humanity um, and then also yeah for for that release as well it serves me in both ways you know um, for me um, I remember taking a social psychology class at Howard 
um, while I was there. And, you know, for me, that's what acting is really, you know, it's, uh, it's about social behavior, human beings. And so, um, I bring my own stuff to it, you know, but you, I'm, I'm looking at that human being and, and the human behaviors that we all have, we have universal, you know, human behaviors and, and some are dormant in other people and some are more prominent. And so, um, so it's, it's, so it's study and it's psychology. Um, and I bring all of that from myself and, and what I'm, what I'm looking at and learning about people to, to the role and then, you know, letting it all go as well. But my Buddhist practice is, is the center and the key. But thank you so much for talking to the Chicago. Oh, thank you, Danielle. It was a pleasure meeting you. Talk to you soon, cuz. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. You too.